hello teacups what's brewing we've had <laughs> quite the weekend with uh, miss Chantel, haven't we um my voice is somewhat back it goes in and out to be completely honest i'm still on tea uh not coffee although man i could do with the coffee right now we're on day five no coffee it makes me very sad i think tomorrow i might finally cave but it just needs a little bit more recovery time I do feel like I turned the corner a little bit with not feeling very well, but uh, I'm still waiting for like my chest to clear out a little bit and stuff like that. So if I'm still a bit husky, I do apologize, but uh, that's where we are. Chantel been busy. Welcome to the payday cycle. My goodness. So I woke up this morning. I had gotten as far as like healthy nashies and I turned it on. I realized Nada was in the car and I was like, oh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> no thank you i had watched a couple of the uh the live she did at the hotel and like i said he gives me a really big case of the ick and i'm not interested in watching content with him in i didn't even go over to his channel for whatever the vlog was i was like i'm not giving him a view i don't want to see him so uh we've got i woke up to like four well there were four lives and two got deleted or privated or or something so uh today we've got driving home thoughts which was deleted but i've got just sayings i've got a cut down of just sayings cut down uh beezing hardcore didn't really have anything in uh cannabis in, is bliss i have not seen because it was deleted uh we'll talk about it very briefly but if there was anything other than the obvious which i'm sure you're aware of uh, i'm not aware of it there was also high beezers, which I believe I have some clips of. And while I was clipping those down, she went online with I figured it out, which I've got I've got a sneaking suspicion is gonna get deleted. Um so I've got that. She has been live since uh since I figured it out, something staying at home all day, something like that. Um I haven't watched that because there comes a point where you just have to cut it off and be like, nope we're working with what we're working with uh we are doing this somewhat recap style i've got a few clips and then i'll talk about them rather than full react because it just makes it easier for me so a quick reminder before we get into the clips foodie last time i checked in with her was on uh her journey to glow up but she had started cooking at home she was um broke pretty much um i don't think she had ordered anything for a few days because she hadn't had any money the power had gone out she thought she was gonna have to go to a hotel uh her and pete's together couldn't scrounge up the money for a crappy hotel so she had asked her audience and then the power had come back on after 12 hours she'd made a joke about a payday loan um which i don't know if it was in this one or if it was a previous one she then when she got paid she was like oh i've paid them off and it sounded like she seriously had, and as much as anything she says is truthful ever. Uh, so I don't know if those payday loans were a joke or not, quite frankly. Um, but she got paid, and then her attitude towards the new, the new restrained lifestyle changed significantly, and she became very open about going away with the weekend, uh, for the weekend to Montreal to stay with Nada, and we got some lives from the hotel. So clearly there's been a deep and meaningful change in foodie's routine. Uh, and this brings us to, it was healthy Nashies when they were driving back. They had a couple in the hotel room where they were eating and they were doing some things. Um, and now this is, I'm presuming after she's dropped Nada off at Dee Dee's house and uh, she, she's driving home from there. I'm bitchy because I have road rage right now. I, it took me 10 fucking minutes to turn into this Tim Hortons. I'm tired of your fucking fat shaming bullshit. Anyways, I ordered two wheelchairs. And if you want to shame me for it, guess what you can do. And Kimikaze, I know you want to like have people go to your fucking channel, your boring channel. Like, you're insane. Can you stop writing in caps locks on my Instagram, on, on my comments? I blocked you, but like, please not make any more counts and like harass me. Thank you. You give me a fucking headache. I'm just tired because I didn't sleep good. I didn't sleep well, but... I think I come on here when I'm positive too and I'm happy, but I can't be all the time. I'm like Jekyll and Hyde with my bitchiness sometimes. I think just like now more than ever, I feel like I really want to have kids in the future. Like, I don't know, like I feel really like, and fuck off if you even say, you're not gonna be a good mother. Like seriously, 
I've seen some pretty questionable parenting by people on this platform, platform who have no business to even open their mouths. You cannot say if somebody is would be a good mother or not. You don't even, one, fully know the person. Two, know what they would be like as a parent because they don't have kids. So shut up, okay? Thanks. Anyways, I would be an awesome mom, actually. I would give my fucking life for my offspring if I had kids. Thank you very much. There's worse people who have kids. That's all I'm saying. It really bugged me today. I was seeing kids everywhere, like really cute kids, and they were smiling at me and just like, and it's just like realizing like, I don't know. It's, it's one day it's gonna be like a problem for me. You know, whenever you like meet somebody that you like fall in love with and you just want to have like ten babies with them and like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. It's just feelings I didn't have before, and like I felt like I knew this would this might happen down the line. Like I was pretty confident when I had my hysterectomy that I wouldn't want kids, but I'm getting older and I'm not terribly healthy, but. I'm saying if my situation changed and I get, did get my shit together, I mean, that might change, you know? But just the fact that I can't, I could never have that option to have that with somebody, with, with a person, with a man, you know? Like, Take so I just feel like really like, I don't know. I don't know, I just feel confused about it. It just bugs me. Anyway, I'm kind of feeling a bit less bitchy. Oh my God, I really, really want to go to anger management. Like, I swear. It interferes with my life, obviously. It's not comfortable and it's just causes confrontations and uh, stress, headaches. I get stress headaches when I get too mad. So, I know I'm blocky. I really, really just can't take it anymore right now. I can't. If you guys were fucking, like, bullied every fucking day and, like, just called out every day on, like, little life choices that you make or things in your personal life, like, I know this is my job, and but sometimes I just need to, like, block people's take a breather like I can the problem is like is there like a medication to make you keep your mind like in the same like I changed my mind like so quick like I noticed that like anyways so are two wheelchairs I'm probably gonna get dinner I know I'm a failure at everything you know what no I'm not a failure okay dieting sucks and it fucking sucks and it's fucking hard so if you eat kale every day and you're healthy good for you leave me alone I don't know if you realize by now that I've made some decisions in my life and if you're not happy with them I don't know the only solution for you is not going to be to stick around and bully me over my life decisions so you have to decide if you are comfortable with watching me for entertainment reasons I will promise to keep as much drama off my channel as I can in return and if not then I guess you will have to unsubscribe I don't know but if I see people being like I'm waiting out the term of my thing I will just blow up your ass I'm blowing my food budget I know I'm not happy about it this is probably why I'm pissed off so I guess I just went live because it's a long drive and I had some stuff to get off my chest. And honestly, I usually listen to some kind of YouTube drama or videos and I honestly don't want to. And I know trail, a trailer park, dog abusing piece of shit trash has been talking shit about me. I'm not going to address them because they're irrelevant and they probably won't even be on YouTube in two minutes anyways. So YouTube doesn't want you back. Take the hint, bitch. Okay. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot. To save some time, I did cut off a lot of the active raging at the end but just so you're aware um she raged at some of the visas that she blocked at her general chat i think we cut it off where she started raging at mfw i believe it was the lady she was on the panel with that called her out um and she had a lot more to say about mfw but i was like let's just let's just try and keep it monetized shall we <laughs> there's enough language in this but let's try uh, she then went back on to raging about reactors, particularly reactors with raspy voices. Um, I, I don't think I'm part of that club usually, but there we go. Uh, she had things to say. Who was it? Kaya, I believe. FFG. I feel like she said some things about some others as well, but I can't quite remember. She went off on Negs and DC, which... Oh, that's quite the pairing. I don't know what's going on there. Please, for the love of God, do not come into my comments and, and form opinions about it. I, I really just want to stay out of it, but oof, it's a lot. She went on to RLR, which I'm assuming is, is Roman. Roman, that guy she had a date with who then kind of become a reactor and is a bit weird. Um, she went back to raging about her chat, something about weight loss surgery and her views on it. And um, I think reactors again. And then she went on to say, okay, let's be positive. Because pretty much 
when she when when we talk shit it makes us bullies when she talks shit she's only ever defending herself which pretty much sums up her life and then she kind of cringe sang uh damn i'm so in love with you which has been in my head ever since <laughs> so there we go um she did make a comment about reactors saying um some people i just sense don't love me in the wrong way i guess I was like, don't love me in the wrong way. I wouldn't necessarily trust her judgment on what love is and how people express it. But, you know, basically she's okay with some reactors if she finds them funny on the right day and, and not, not with others. So um, that was really the rage portion, which was most of the trip. I would say clearly something went down with Nada because she wouldn't, she is saying how she had um, a good time, how she how she uh, has got like a vlog coming out, which in the wake of all of these, I kind of hope she doesn't release, which we'll get into later. Um, but she's pissed. <laughs> she is pissed. She's pissed through all of this. So something has gone down. Something has not gone well for all. She's trying to present it as a fantastic weekend because she would not be in this bitch of a mood if, if things had all gone very nicely. Uh, secondly, what should be a more serious conversation, uh, but really the only response I can come up with is, oh God, no, is her talking about wanting to be a mom. On one hand, like, I, obviously I can't read her mind, but every indication she's ever given about her and children is that she absolutely doesn't want them. Um, do you remember quite recently that, that little kid, Ethan, that was at her door and she literally shut the door in his face? And I'm sorry, you could hear from a mile away that that kid was adorable. And then she was like, okay, bye, because <laughs> she wanted to take her food up. She's never seemed particularly comfortable with kids when she's talked about kids before. It hasn't necessarily been complimentary. Like, and I'm not judging that. Some people don't want kids and have never wanted kids, and that's fine. Um, but I, I've not pegged her as someone who was naturally drawn to children. Now, I know when she had her hysterectomy, I mean, we always talk about therapy for dis different reasons, but I understood that she might, even if she didn't want kids, go through some kind of grieving process because it's very different to say I don't want them and then to have the option of them taken away. And I was willing to give her a lot more leeway for that. But since then, it's only ever really come up when um, she wants to make a point or she wants a bit of sympathy. No, I'm still grieving this. And I, I can see how at parts of her life she would have grieved it, but it doesn't feel particularly sincere. And I suppose that's the problem with Foodie being the kind of person she is it's very hard to take even serious things seriously. So she seems very upset by the fact, essentially, that she can't give Nada children. I don't think he's interested in having them, quite frankly. Um, I don't think he's interested in having them. She says that she was crying about it and that he was basically saying, well, there are other options. I mean, to be completely honest, I don't see the other options being viable for her because options like uh, adoption for example are not easy processes and if you come in as somebody who is not in a stable relationship um, or is in a relationship but is in a relationship with somebody with his history assuming she even got in there like she'd have to gag and chain him and drag him into that office but he doesn't have the best history she is not in a stable relationship She's not in a stable mental headspace. She said she could, you know, sort it out, but you no know, indication that she'd be able to do the work with that. She hasn't shown much evidence of being able to take care of herself on a day-to-day -day basis, let alone another very vulnerable human being. Um, she's not financially stable. She's not healthy. Now, I know that um, any one of those things might be something you could work with. I'm pretty sure she's pretty near the age limit for adoption as well. Is there any, someone said like 38 or so was an age limit. I'm not sure about how it goes in Canada. I could be wrong about that. But she's got a lot of factors working against her. She's got 
history of addiction, which she has actually reported to a doctor. Like it's, it, it's a lot. I don't think the system is as easy as she's presuming it would be. And even as she's going through that, even if she acknowledges that it's hard or that, that she doesn't know how hard it is at the very least, she also makes some very concerning comments about, you know, how I, I wouldn't want a kid that wasn't mine, essentially. And how, you know, kids that I think it was through surrogacy would want to know their mom and just not really acknowledging that motherhood is a lot more than a blood relationship and that it would be very complicated in that way but you know someone who raises you and loves you is is your mother and um it's just <laughs> the fact that she hasn't even considered that would make me very concerned about having her as a mother in general but a mother to someone she hadn't birthed herself because it seems like unless she delivered a child, which is physically impossible for her, she wouldn't consider it her own. And I don't think that's a great way to start, you know? But that's all kind of moot because she can't have her own kids, so there we go. Uh, but uh, yeah, Foodie as a mom. She made the point of like, how dare you, like, don't you fucking dare say that I'd be a bad mom. I'm, I'm outright saying it. I tell you now, I'm saying it. Uh, because for all she says, well, you don't know me, everything we've seen shows a lack of care in many things. And yes, there is a there are a percentage of people that have children and completely change their lives because of that child. But Foodie has been in major turning points in her life before, points where I think a lot of people would have looked and said, now i gotta make a change and she's never made life has only ever gotten worse it's never gotten better and I, I don't see a child changing that i see a child as i see many of her ideas which is an impulse that wouldn't end up panning out and i'd hate to put a child into a situation like that because a, a child isn't a temporary decision it's not something you change your mind on you know so uh, the fact that she's like, there are worse parents out there. I have seen them. I could name some. I'm like, well, that's not, it's not a race to the bottom. The fact that other people are shitty parents doesn't mean you should aim to be a shitty parent. Well, I wouldn't be as bad as them, so I'd be good. It, it's, it's not a thing. She would be a terrible parent. She can't take care of herself. Her house is a mess. She has addiction problems. She doesn't keep her own hygiene. Could you imagine her, like sterilizing bottles correctly could you imagine her being selfless enough to give the kind of time and energy and hard work that goes into raising a baby into a child into an adult because i can't see it i don't have children and i used to really want them but the older i get the more i realize that i'm getting more selfish in my life and i you know i have kids through my teaching I, um, I, I don't raise them obviously, but it's, I have a connection in that way and I impact children's lives in that way. But the older I get, the more I think, ah, maybe kids are not for me. Maybe I like coming home to my nice quiet apartment and relaxing a little bit. Maybe I enjoy having time where I can switch everything off and say, no, this is my space and my time and my choices. And it's okay to realize that. But I, I wouldn't want Foodie being a mom. I think it wouldn't be fair to the child. And maybe that's incredibly harsh of me. Maybe it's incredibly unfair of me. Maybe I'm misjudging her character and she has a depth we haven't seen. But I haven't seen it. And frankly, nothing she's ever shown on this channel has made me think any different. Okay, so then there was a, uh, a video called Beezing Hardcore. I don't actually have clips for this because there wasn't really anything in it. All it was is she stopped on the way home at the cannabis store to buy some edibles and um, gave us a bit of attitude about what she perceived would be our attitude, which she perceived correctly. I was like, really? But remember at the end of the month when she didn't have money to buy any of this, she wasn't going to anymore? That's out the window. 
And if you if you mentioned that she had said, no, I don't want to do it for a whole nother month and I need to get off of it and I'm really using it as a crutch in my life and I'm concerned, well, then you're an asshole for reminding her of that. So there we are. Um, the next one, Cannabis is Bliss, was deleted. I have no idea what else happened in the stream, but I do know at some point she leant back, lifted up a dress and showed the whole internet all of her business. Uh, it's on Twitter if you really feel the need to bleach your eyeballs today. Um, yeah, I don't, I got nothing. I don't know what to tell you, I don't know why she would do that, but the fact that her channel still exists on YouTube after being cancelled once for nudity and sexual content um, is, is a mystery for the ages, quite frankly, because how many people were tagging Team YouTube in it? I'm amazed her channel hasn't been taken down. So if there was anything else you see in that, I didn't see it and I apologise for missing it, but my eyes had seen enough, quite frankly. So let's move on to high beezers. The clips I have chosen very much encapsulate the entire energy of this, this stream. She was zooted. Like she had taken, I think she said a thousand milligrams. She'd eaten a lot of that wheelchair. Like she went for it. So I'll let you watch. Oh yeah, Tracy. Yeah. I don't want to cry anymore. Almost half, probably almost a thousand milligrams. I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding, my cold little heart. <laughs> I feel like there's something wrong. I just can't figure it out. There's something eating at my soul, and I don't know what it is. I feel like I'm drowning in the Montreal River, I swear. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm just having like a panic attack. I think I just really just I'm okay. I just need to like work through it. Holy shit! If I told you everything I've been through, there's so much shit you guys don't know about. So much shit. It's not, not to do anything. No, no, I'm not talking about Nader. I'm talking about a lot of other stuff. No, not pregnant. Not the phone. Just one, what are you? Skanky Montreal bitches. Oh my god, I can't believe I just said that! Oh my fucking god! Oh my god! Stop! I can't talk like this! Oh my god! Oh my god! What the fuck? <laughs> so hateful! I hate it! Do you want to see a couple of nice pictures from today? <laughs> oh, look at this is Natter with the glasses. <laughs> How can you see it? I know Miss Holly. He lives there. <laughs> you know, right now. I think he's getting his own place June 1st. Maybe. I think. <laughs> Fuck faces! Oh my god! <laughs> I feel like I can't breathe. You guys are supposed to have my back no matter what. Fuck that shit. Right? I need like a fucking... I need supporters. No, 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 no. Supposed to get an apartment with him. <laughs> But it's stressing me out, and <laughs> I don't know if I should do it or not. I can't situation. I can't. Lying sack of shit. <laughs> Burn 
in hell with Dee Dee. That's the problem. Like, I know within me it's something is just fucking not right. Like, I just feel like something's not right. Like, I'm lying to myself about this. Okay. So, she was completely gone for most of this. Um, a couple of things where she was like, personal stuff, not Nada. Spoiler alert, it was totally Nada. Second, <laughs> this shit, when she was like, oh, I think he's getting his own place come June 1st. I'm pretty sure. I think. Um, she, she was planning on moving in with him on June 1st. Like, in the next stream, she admits they were meant to be looking for apartments, and that's why she was having these panic attacks while she was completely high and in no condition to deal with it. Like, oh, it was, um, it was a lot. It also explains why when she was making that stir fry with rice thing she made a few days ago, she made an offhand comment of, oh, I made Pete help me because it teaches them how to do it. it. It makes them learn. And I clocked it and I was like, I'm going to keep an eye on that because there is no reason for him to learn unless she's planning to not be there or she's planning for him to live independently. Because so long as she's there, they'll live on ordering out. She doesn't need to teach him anything, you know? She doesn't cook that often herself. She doesn't need to teach him. But if they separate, even if she's willing to kind of give him a leg up with rent or whatever, which she may not be in a financial uh, position, to do for much longer because she's making some choices with her money recently he's going to need to cook for himself a little bit more and yeah he can just do microwave meals and he probably will but he's not going to have the option of ordering in every night the way he does when he's with her so yeah you couldn't get a lot out of this this stream really because she was so far gone but um just those couple of things <laughs> we clocked so then she wakes up in full kind of life hangover mode the next day where she's taking what actually in a non-sarcastic way could be a real raw look at herself, you guys. But these changes never last. And it's not that we haven't heard it before, but she speaks with a fair amount of clarity on the situation. It just never sticks, you know, but it is clarity for, for what it's worth. Which is why I think the stream's going to end up being deleted. She also speaks, I want to use the word explicitly, but I don't quite mean it like that, on exactly what the essay allegations were. So just be aware that that's in here and she's going to describe what happened in clearer detail than she's given us before. I know it's eating at my soul. I have a weird rash on my leg. Why every time I see you, I have new diseases? And now my freaking pee hurts. Before I went to bed, I literally like worried about my situation until I fell asleep. Like, I couldn't figure out what was eating at my soul. Like, I am delusional with him because I ignore like all the imp really, really important, horrible, horrible fucking things he's done to me. And I like romanticize everything else to make it feel like a real like relationship. Even though I was having a good time, I like felt like something was bugging me. The thing is, is it's never gonna work because in order, in order for it to work, to be with him in a relationship, I have to be like super not myself, and it like really eats at my soul. Like, I feel like he just wants it to to make me look bad. Like. The thing with the essay, what fucking happened, and too bad, like, what happened was, he didn't, I didn't, he really, really likes anal sex, and I fucking hate it. And he always pressures me to do it. And then one day, he was drunk and got mad, and, like, put it in anyways. And it, it hurt me. I'm struggling between, is that the normal act of a boyfriend? Because I did bleed after. Is that the normal act of a boyfriend? Because sometimes they're pushy. Sometimes they're pushy. And that's why I got upset on... CJ's panel because it, it, something did happen that fucking affects me like it does bug me that he doesn't respect me when all I do is everything for him he was drunk and just like kind of maybe just like fresh like just like Ugh. like you know maybe he was joking around like Ugh. you know here I don't know maybe it was like an oops like am I you know what I mean like am I gonna really say sexual assault over an oops was it an oops didn't feel like an oops to me at the time but I was 
talking about it to the detective, so that's why I did that. Oh, I just don't even want to fucking talk about it anymore. I know I wasn't lying. I was like trying, I, I'm like gonna be a liar for, for a man who doesn't even, for a man who does what? Nothing but fucking like drain me. And I try to make it seem like, like yesterday when we were, I was even buying Nashies. Oh, he's paying, you know, like I tried to make it seem like it was his money. Such a fucking joke. I have to lie to myself every day to be with this man and it fucking eats me alive and I can't do it. Messes with my brain. It makes me insane. And if I allow it, I'll just do it again. You're very abusive. So like yesterday, today, this morning, early, I'm supposed to go and we're supposed to get apartments. And I'm like so stressed out trying to do all these things obviously alone for like to like what set him up with a life like for him to like leave me later like oh my god i'm such an idiot i have to use every ounce of myself for this man for it to work and no fuck i can't no it's not about payday reunion it's about you know like he was so like he was so mean to me the other day when i was videoing him and he's like he's like no you say I never beat you, but you didn't say I never sexually assaulted you. I said, yes, I did. I said on the panel when they asked me specifically, I said, yes, you didn't hear me. I went to a hotel with him once, Hotel Monville. I didn't order him like what he liked and he got really mad. He's like, I'm not a fucking animal. And then he fucking like smacked me across the face. And I was like, and I, I was like, are you fucking serious? I'm like, this is why you're fucking going to jail. And then he's like, uh, ah, see? He's like, how can you, like, he gets mad that I, like, said that. Well, you can't fucking slap me whenever the fuck you want. Of course, I have to drop the charges if I want to be with him. How can I be with... And, like, I just don't, I, I don't, mentally, for real, I don't have, I can't go through a trial and, like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I don't want to do, I don't want to put him in jail. No, I don't want to, I don't want to do it. Yeah, I'm getting stuff off my mind, and I want to, that's why I'm doing it on here with, I need to be, like, judgment-free right now. I just need to be able to say what I want. But yes, I'm still high from that edible. So you try to reverse what you do out of guilt. Like, you want to, you don't want to ruin the man's life, blah, 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 blah. And so eventually the fucking courts are like, no, like, we have to see, like, you know, what actually happened like if this person like if you're not going to hold him accountable then we fucking will if something happened but then i changed my statement and i kind of lied about it like oh i don't really remember i was really high i was high i mean i did do like coke that night but i mean i was i remember like everything <clears throat> but i made it seem like i didn't or i might have been psychotic a bit or i'm very insane like i'm very crazy I was like, just watch my YouTube channel. I'm very insane. And like doing things like that was like, is what eats at my soul. Like, like lying like that. Like when I know it's to protect him for things he did to me. You know what I mean? No, I'm not okay with him living with Dee Dee. Like, no, I did sexual things with them twice. I don't want to be destitute. That's the thing. Uh, he made it rain in Dee Dee's condo with my money. You friggin' cum bum. He's really good at fake loving. He fake loves you too, Dee Dee. Trust me, he talks so much shit about you. Because we were supposed to go together. We had all these plans that I just fucked. That's what going to the hotel, spending the last few days, couple days with him was all about. Planning our life together. Apartments. Apartment hunting. That's why the kids talk, because he... Yesterday, I was crying about it in the car. And then, uh... He's like, there's other ways, like, you can, he's like, adopt and all this other shit. And we were just talking about. So I don't want to make it seem like he was like, oh, you know, like, like, I did help him with money, obviously. Yes, I pretty much, like, yeah, I gave him a lot of, like, not a lot, a lot of money, actually, because I don't have a lot of money, actually. Like, no joke. If I get an apartment, I will be sucked dry and that's what's that's what i was had an anxiety attack last night because i think i think that's what that's why this is why i figured it out i'm trying to figure out like okay 
If I had such a good time the past couple days, why am I like this? So for weed, on the packages of the weed container, it says effects for weed can take 6 to 12 hours. So just to be safe, I want to wait 12 hours before I ever drive after doing any kind of THC. So first, can we say since she's come back from the weekend, she looks the very definition of ridden hard and pull away wet. Like, she's got not sores, but her face is breaking out. She obviously hasn't been taking care of herself. She looks like she's had a rough weekend, which essentially she has. Um, but this is, like I say, more clarity than we usually hear from her. Usually she's angry, and so she's spewing out these facts like they're bullets, like they're attacks she's having on Nada. Here she's just, I think tired, hung over, the reality of actually moving in with him and being trapped, and I think she used the term um, sucked dry, in some part of her brain registers as terrifying, which is why she was just losing it when she was high when, and unable to really deal with that on any sense. So it came out a lot more clearly there, that's why she was in such a state, and also the fact that Part of her consciously or subconsciously wanted to avoid going this morning, which is why she was suddenly so concerned with um, how the THC affects her driving. Hey, do you remember this past year where we did the math and we were like, with the amount she takes, even if she isn't actively high, she's definitely driving under the influence. And she was like, no, no, I had a two hour nap. It's tomorrow now even if it wasn't tomorrow, it's just that she had napped. So confirmation that she definitely drove under the influence many times during this, uh, during this year, which we knew, but she has now confirmed, which makes the raging she had at MFW driving drunk even more like, huh, that's a choice. But as I say, we get more clear detail on what exactly the SA charges were, or rather what the event was that caused her to go and report it, and exactly how the um, the changing of the report went down and kind of what she did to minimise it when she couldn't retract it. Now, obviously, this is based on Foodie's account, and Foodie is not a reliable person. And this makes me sad in, in many ways. Not so much for her, which is kind of awful, but the fact is she's gone around this, this ring so many times that what is will be with her now. There's very little anyone can do um, other than what she chooses, you know. But the fact that she did this, the fact that she went and she changed her story, the fact that she set herself up even if the reality is she is quite unstable in many ways what she did makes all real victims less believable and i really hate that it's on her channel because people watching who may seriously want to go to the police may be watching this and then think well they're not going to believe me or this is what they're going to see and might not go because of what they've seen here and i just i really I hate that i don't i don't think when people talk about showcasing or supporting um domestic abuse on channel this is what they mean this is the danger that it has that every time someone like Chantel walks into a police station it makes it harder for a victim that actually wants change to walk into a police station and I hate that. That being said, if the stories she brought here are true, and I kind of hate having to preface it like that, but it's foodie, if those stories are true, then abuse did happen. When she's like, is it an oops? I was like, a fucking oops? What? What, you think he fell? You just landed wrong and there you were? It's not an oops, it's a deliberate act. And when she's like, well, sometimes boyfriends are pushy, well then, my dear, you've had the wrong boyfriend. Now, officially, her only, like, proper relationships were BB and Pete's, and I don't think either of them did that. So she's talking about terrible hookups. So she's clearly had some experiences in her life, and any of the story times 
that she has told in her uh, further his in her further back history. Um, and the old law of foodie shows that she has a very odd relationship with the idea of affection and we've seen that magnified with um with nada but how she talks about relationships and how she takes actions of proof of love when actually they're really problematic actions when she starts talking like that and she's uh, saying oh well sometimes boyfriends are pushy tells me she's been hanging around with the wrong men because it shouldn't be that way so very concerning clarity on the issue again if you believe her i i think she's in a bad situation but i think she's fucked everything up enough that even if she genuinely wanted change at this point even if she genuinely tried to pursue change through the legal system seriously at this point there's no way anything could happen she's kind of screwed herself which means the only way for her to take a step out of it is if she takes the step which I don't think she's going to do. Also, the money. So she gave Nada money, obviously, and then he's on his channel. He did a live where he was, like, making it rain with all the, all the bills. And she then goes off and she's like, oh, what do you think it looks like? And I was like, I think it looks like you're a fool. I think it looks like you are a fool because you gave him that money, money that you've said you don't have to give. And we think again about the payday loans. Let's say for a moment, because I can't tell, let's say for a moment the payday loan thing was serious. So if she took out a payday loan, I'm guessing that would have been a thousand or two. So that's then knocked off the total she has for this month. She still owes taxes. And she said that her accountant had contacted her saying, hey, the CRA would really like me to tell you to pay your damn taxes. And she was saying how she was pretty sure she was going to get audited at some point. I'm like, oh, enjoy jail. You know, <laughs> like, damn. And that the taxes being filed was actually part of a bankruptcy, which I hadn't considered. And there's a whole manner of things there. And how when they had done the healthy Nashi thing that um, she pretended he had paid and stuff like that. And I just sit there and I think, even in a shitty motel, how much money do you think she laid out for this weekend? She went shopping, she went to Pennington's, she paid for the passports and she used the plural for that. So they were $80 each, the passports to the museums that Montreal has. So she said they were $80 each, so I'm guessing she at least bought one for her in Nada, so that would have been 160. Gas, food, hotel bill, but now she's on the way back. Anything else they bought? Like, she had an expensive weekend. But, you know, he was happy to be with her because it was payday and that's the cycle. And now she's come back home and she's had, uh, she's gotten high, she's gotten upset, she's asked back for support when she was like, oh, I need support. Hi, hi. I'm betting the next live we get. She was still a little bit ragey when I, I clicked in briefly to the new one that's up, the staying at home one, and I was like, oh, she's not over it yet. But pretty soon we're going to cap all this off with a very soft-spoken, uh, full of good intentions version of Chantal that we always end up getting when everything else goes to shit. Because, oh, you were right. No, I need to, I need to take a break from him. You know, we did all this stuff. Um, it just depends if we get that today, tomorrow or, or when. But that seems to be the full cycle. She's gone through it all and I guess that'll be it until next payday and we'll have the next 30 days of I'm not talking about him on channel anymore you guys so I will leave you there I hope you've enjoyed this and I will see you next time thank you so much for being here bye bye